Greetings from Paragon Software Group. In this video guide we're going to show you how Paragon UFSD driver of XFS file system works with UEFI, the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, which is gradually taking over from BIOS. By default UEFI doesn't support the Linux XFS file system, but our product provides full read and write access to partitions formatted as XFS immediately at powering on the computer even prior to the installed operating system starting up. We will show you some usage examples and the essential capabilities of the driver, reading data from an XFS volume mounted in UEFI by our driver and writing data to that volume. To do that we're going to create checksums under Linux for all our test dataset files then test whether the Checksums match under UEFI, which implies reading data from XFS. Then we're going to create a copy of the test dataset and checksums on the XFS volume under UEFI using our product. Next, we will confirm that copying was completed correctly by testing once more the checksums of the copied datasets under Linux. For this demo we will use a virtual test VMware Workstation instance consisting of a virtual machine with OS Linux Debian 8 x64 installed and a virtual machine configured to boot into built-in UEFI shell also x64 by VMware. We will also use a test drive attached to both machines that we will power on in turns to emulate sequential loading into different environments and a USB flash drive containing Paragon UFSD driver and the test utilities. Let's prepare a test dataset. The size of the test disk is 16 GB with the GPT partitioning scheme, having a single X4 volume with a 4 KB cluster size. The volume label makes it easy to identify. Drive auto mounted startup is disabled to avoid auto check and the repair of the file system. Check that the volume has no mistakes. And now let's mount it. The volume includes a preloaded test dataset containing regular files and directories, files with the compressed attribute, files with localized, in this case Russian, file names files with permitted but rarely used symbols in their names, files of various sizes, a deep subdirectory tree with many levels of folders and files, and a subtree comprising subdirectories with very long names. Now we are going to create a checksum file for all the files in the test dataset in order to check if the files are read and written correctly. Since UEFI shell supports the UCS2 little endian byte order mark encoding, we'll have to use a wrapper script for the standard MD5 deep utility. We will save the checksum file together with the test dataset, check its validity and shut down the Linux virtual machine in a proper manner. Now let's power on our UEFI shell machine. At the moment the machine only has a single auxiliary volume mounted containing the UEFI system partition formatted with the default file system. The UFSD driver is not yet loaded. So we attach the USB flash drive containing the UFSD driver and load the driver. Then we make sure the driver is actually loaded. We'll update the list of mounted volumes. Yes, there is a new volume mounted. Let's review its properties and finally the volume's content. To test the checksums we use a standard MD5 sum utility ported to UEFI. First we'll make sure it can detect checksum errors and to do that we'll remove a file from the test dataset and modify another file then run md5sum to test the checksums. Alright errors have been detected. 
Let's restore the initial state of the test data set. And now it's time to make sure all the data located on the volume mounted by the UF SD driver is correctly readable. Here we are, there are no more error messages. Now let's test write access to XFS. We'll write a copy of the test dataset and its checksum file on the same volume, and then we'll confirm that the driver can read the data it has just written. And finally, it will be checked that the changes made to the volume by our driver can be correctly treated by the native XFS driver. And for this purpose, we'll shut down the UEFI shell machine and start the Linux machine all over again. Let's make sure the volume contains no errors. We'll also test that the copied data is correct. We can observe that the dataset comprises the same number of files. Now let's test the checksums of the copied files. The checksums of all files also match. We have just confirmed that the test dataset has been successfully written. Thanks for watching.